Hey guy, hello. Good evening. Welcome to the end of the week. Uh, hope you're proud of making it this far as I am of you and me. <laughs> like I said, Wednesday. It was the rest of the week was pretty smooth sailing because I did finish that assignment. So, uh, of course, work is never done. Started up on a new one right away, but you know, <laughs> the beginnings usually the more easygoing part, right? Because you have a lot more time to kind of work things out as a deadline approaches. That's when you need to get serious, right? You need to start perhaps focusing in a bit harder, try to uh, figure things out a bit more consistently. Of course, you should be consistent all the way through, but you know, it's, it's like that effect where, you know, you think you got a lot of time Right, so maybe you take it a little bit easier. You're like, yeah, you know what? I can I can make it up later, right? And you keep on saying that until you start running out of time and you're going, okay, maybe now I need to uh, buckle down and, uh, you know, put my head down and start really working at it. But I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But for now, tonight, we are going to check out a demo of a game, Nights in Tight Spaces, uh, the follow-up to... A little game that uh, it's called Fights in Tight Spaces. Can I say that the that their title, the title they picked, is quite inspired, right? <laughs> Man, I love it when games just put out the title that's just got that pun game going. Granted, this one probably only makes sense if you know that uh, the developer Ground Chatter created Fights in Tight Spaces beforehand. Right, it's not really something that quite... I, it, it works on its own, too, but you appreciate it a lot more when you know about fights in tight spaces, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So, this is also published by Raw Fury, which seems interesting, but... Yeah. I, I didn't even realize they announced a, a, a sequel, like, until, like, a few weeks ago. I think they had like a demo at some point, but man, if they had, if I knew it existed, I probably would have played this some time back. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna make good on this now. We're gonna we're gonna play this now. It's getting here. Now this is a demo, so we only have two options: new game and tutorial. Let's go through the new game. And a, a, dis a difficulty select. I like how the difficulties are. Kind of, kind of have that fantasy feel to it. Uh, you have. They're all pretty positive too, right? Honorable, you know, at least feels complimentary, but heroic really feels like you're really giving it to you, right? It's like you're gonna be really, really awesome, and so is everyone else. I can't again. I like this trend of. Maybe not being as quite as mocking with the difficulty levels. It's like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you want to take it easy, pick pick the, pick the easier ones. If you want to really get it on, then here you go. Toughest challenge, heroic. I think for this stream we will pick Noble. Because not quite... Not too good at the, this kind of game. At least, very least... Fights in tight spaces really kicked my butt. And we only have two classes available to us. We have the Brawler, good old fisticuffs uh, type of fighter, pretty close to what you know about in fights in tight spaces, and the Fighter, which is a weapon specialist. Think of him like a person in arms kind of deal. Let's, let's do Brawler. That unarmed combat specialist at their best when fighting with fists and feet. And you can also see uh, their stats. How much health they start with, what items they start with, uh, what sorts of um, extra perks they have, and their starting deck. All right, I guess I should mention, this is a deck-building uh, roguelite. If you haven't played Fights in tight, uh, tight Spaces before, this is pretty much what it is, right? <laughs> You've pro probably seen these before, All right? You start with... Uh, deck of cards, you get more cards throughout your run, and then you can kind of mess with your deck to uh, get yourself a good good engine going. Uh, oh, I guess I should also mention fights in tight spaces. 
Uh, interestingly enough, cast you as like a secret agent in England. You were working for, uh, I guess like an agency out to clean up Europe of nefarious groups. Which is why the game kind of caught my attention, right? In addition to like the minimalist style it had. The fact that, you know, the deck building aspect felt, I thought, lent itself really well uh, to, like, the way the game played out. When you think about it, um, maybe I'll, I'll talk more about it once I get in here. Let's, uh, select a brawler, and you can, can choose to name him, or you can, like, choose to randomize it. Matilda Duval, <laughs> Edith de Frez. Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> Barkeeper. Hustler! Didn't I warn you what would happen if I saw you around here again? And right out the gate, we can we have our first choice. We can choose to get money, we can get armor, or get max health. Just like a little starting boon. Remember Slade Aspire? Like how after the first run, the giant whale creature would give you a choice of things you could start with? It's kind of like that. Um, i try armor this time, see what Stand Your Ground has. New equipment, Light Armor, equipped by Edith, Edith de Ferres. And continue. <laughs> I suppose I could leave, but then who would defend this place against all the lowlives of the kingdom? The entire reason these lowlives come here is because of you! So they are the Trouble Repeller and the Trouble Magnet. Man, it's a heavy burden, what, what you think? What I'm hearing is that I am good for business. Not if you're like, you know, wrecking the whole place. Cost of repair is probably is a lot more than whatever revenue this bar would generate from all the people who would come to see this fight. And who would do that? I don't know, I just got a flashback to high school. Whenever a fight broke out there, you always had like at least three quarters of the class would run out and see who's duking it out. And I don't know. It's something about like conflicts in real life I'm a bit averse to. Right? Either I'll try to walk away from it or I'll defuse try to defuse the situation if I think I ha I'm able to. And on a slightly related note, I'm not too much of a fan of hockey either. <laughs> Soon the decision will be made for you, and you're going to make an enemy you can't simply brush aside. <laughs> Isn't that true, right? You keep, uh, keep, you know, poking, you keep making enemies of everyone, eventually you're gonna face the off against an enemy that, uh, yeah. You might, you might end up punching above your, uh, pay grade. Something like that, right? The door bursts open, revealing a gang of angry thugs. Oh, speak of the devil. Oh, like these guys. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, okay. Map is slightly different from the last time I played it. Alright. Anyways, we, we start here. Right, location, encounter, quest, demo, quest, mission, <laughs> protect your honor. It's a first fight, so, you know, they might pull their punches a little bit. Yeah, look at this style. You know, it's a bit more fleshed out, but you can see they, they're trying for like a medieval painting kind of deal. Right, you can see your player character here in green. All the enemies are in red. Also, look at how they kind of do the rotation thing too, right? See the walls kind of lower themselves down as you rotate the camera, but once you kind of get it back into perspective, they raise back up like it's some sort of pop-up book. How fucking rad is that? Man, he's got style for days, like, holy crap. Anyways, this is like the meat and potatoes of fights in tight spaces, right? You get a hand of five cards, you got a resource, in, in this case, it's a uh, momentum, and then you gotta use that momentum to beat up these thugs. Now, from this grid here, uh, as you might expect, you can you can move and punch, and in this game, positioning is very important. This game will tell you outright, like, where an enemy will attack, uh, what they can do, how much health they have, what other perks they might have, 
and what order they will act in. So, so this game kind of gives you like just about everything you need to plan it out. Now, coming back to that earlier point I wanted to get to, this reminds me a lot, right, of the sort of the moment-to-moment -moment, uh, decision making that might be happening in a fight scene, right? You could think of like each turn as like a, say a couple seconds, maybe a minute. And your character's just like frantically looking around. All right, all right, what can I do? And the cars perhaps represent the various thoughts that kind of flash through their head. It's like, all right, what if I, what if I, you know, move two spaces over here and then front kick this guy and then um, smash another fella in the head, right? That's what I find like so cool about this, and it's gonna get even cooler at the end. But for now, let's uh, let's beat up these folks, shall we? So we got a card here like uh, Head Smash. This is like straight from Fights in Tight Spaces, where if an enemy is next to a wall, an edge, or an object, you can deal massive damage to them. So hey, this works. You click the card, select your target, and watch the whole thing play out. Look at that. 11 damage. We just knocked him out cold. Right. Boom. Just right on the ground. Um, okay, so... I want to go to the side here so that I can at least keep on avoiding their attacks. So we'll do that. And I guess we'll give them a front kick. Let's kick them to the side. And uh, sadly, not much else we can do here. So let's just end the turn. So now the enemies will make their move. And since. They have no one to attack, they will just move their way towards me. Now we got ourselves a new set of actions, and oh boy. <laughs> you can already see one of them is going to be pretty sweet. So what I'm going to do here is leg sweep. So now there are also certain attacks that will cause like status effects, I guess you could call them. Like this one will knock down an enemy, right? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that they were able to be knocked down, so... Boom! And then we can follow that up with a... 30 damage to an adjacent downed enemy! Just stomp them! Right, it's like a combo finisher. Anyways, that's that done. Um... I guess we can shift over this way, just step over that... Not unconscious body, and... Oh, we're gonna have to end it here. Now, you did see there were circles with arrows kind of down there as well. That shows that additional enemies will show up, right? They'll drop down, they kind of face the direction that the arrow is pointing in, and then they'll usually get like a free action, so gotta be mindful of that. So now let's take care of this fella. 11 HP, so we can actually take him out in like two actions. Give him a quick strike, and then finish it off with leg sweep. Boom! Just like that. And then make our way to here. Just get ready for this. And turn. Alright, let's see what we can do. Ooh! Another head smash to finish things off. They both have 11 HP, so it really doesn't matter who I hit. Um... Yeah, let's hit this fella. Right on the table! <laughs> like that. Okay, so like I said, positioning is very important, and there are certain cards that will allow you to reposition your enemies, like this one, Grapple, allow you to move a target to any adjacent tile, so... What you do is kind of like just grab them and shift them over and they'll also usually tell you what happens to the enemy afterwards so for example grapple will make them face away so now we can just like push them against the wall right like it's like we're high school bullies right now just pushing someone in the back Ugh. again more bad memories all right let's end this turn <laughs> oh man they're gonna face us but there's not much they can do before i go this is Knights in tight spaces! Oh man, now here's the best part. Look at that glorious victory. 
what you can do is sure replay and what I'll do is um <laughs> kind of replay the battle you just did but now make it more like it's in real time which is pretty cool it was actually a bit cooler in fights in tight spaces because everyone dashed everywhere yeah it still still looks a little bit jank but it's pretty neat also a little buggy because I'm assuming music is supposed to keep playing, but you know, <laughs> it's an early demo. We can we can forgive it for little little bug that doesn't really affect the grand scheme of things here and there, right? Anyways, let's move on. Oh yeah, you can pick a uh, cards too as usual. Let's see. I think I will pick counter, actually. <laughs> you know who that was, don't you? I can't be expected to recognize everyone that wants a piece of me. <laughs> Jeez. Fellow made so many enemies. It's like, yeah, alright. <laughs> Just another Tuesday, am I right? For you, Brock Barkeeper, this brawl might have been the greatest day of your life. But for me, it was only a Tuesday. Well, get to know them. That gang controls the whole region. You need to be ready because when they find out what you've done, they will come for you. They'll come for all of us. Oh, man. So we set off. Heard you were causing trouble. I would argue that trouble very much came to me. That was just the start of it. Can I offer you some assistance? Yes, let's gain a party member. Hmm. They're a hunter. At best, they're best when armed with a bow, but has a few surprises when it comes to close-up engagements. I'm guessing they add these cards to the deck. <laughs> sure, random stranger. Let's fight some bad guys together. All right, let's make our way to the next fight here, then. <laughs> Escape the outlaws. They find themselves on the street. Suddenly, outlaws attack. They're like, give us your money. And the party's like, no way. Some guards give you the ability to counterattack, and some enemies have the same ability. Look for this icon here, the little arrows icon. Character with the counter ability will attack any incoming attacker within their normal attack range. Enemies with counter attacks. Enemies will counter attacks from both you and the other enemies, no matter whose turn the attack occurs on. Okay, so you can set up some really fun stuff here. So this is like the big, big change from Fights in Tight Spaces. Because Fights in Tight Spaces, you were only one character, right? You only controlled one fella throughout the entire game, no matter what. But in this game, they changed it up a little bit. You get to control a party. So now you get like two characters on the field. You can see them both over here with separate HP bars. Thing is, they all share the same hand. So they can theoretically use most of the moves. But as you can see at like the top spot here, uh, certain cards are exclusive to certain characters. So for example, this grapple card can only be used by someone who is currently unarmed, and quick shot can only be used by someone who's equipped with a ranged weapon, so you do have to keep that in mind when you're building your deck now. But uh, also, everyone shares the same resource momentum. You do get like one more per additional party member you have, so now that I have one more, I get like four instead of three. But you can use them, you know, you can distribute them characters any which way you want, so it's pretty cool like that. There's some other cool stuff here that I hope I can show off, but for now, let's uh, set things up.
So yeah, what you saw there was like a combo attack. Whenever like an, a, one of your party members is in like an attack range of an enemy and one of your party members hits them for an attack, anyone else within attack range will kind of throw in additional attacks. So that's a pretty cool thing too. If you can set up your party in the right way, you can get yourself some nice wombo combos going. It's great. Looks like what we've got here is another quick shot. I think what I can do here is shift my ranger again, get him out of the way. And... Ooh! <laughs> so this is like the fun part, right? Uh, since, the, since this move is not exclusive to grapple or uh, unarmed fighters, I can just have my ranger just leg sweep them like that. And then stomp them. <laughs> stompy, stompy. It's great. Makes your all your crew feel a lot more competent too. It's pretty neat. Right. It's like, yeah, they they can shoot people with arrows, but if they really need to throw down, they can totally do that as well. It's pretty cool. Alright, so we got ourselves some new enemies here. <laughs> A brigand. They got they got pole staffs here. Uh, they will push and deal five damage. And right now, one of them's got a lock on my ranger, so I need to get them out of the way here. Which I think I'll do it like this. So now I can do is select this fella, move him up here, and uh, check out this sweet combo about the oop. Oh. I was, all, I was about to mess things up. Okay, check out the sweet combo I'm gonna do. Alright, alright. Ready for this? Push! And my fighter's just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Ox him right in the face. How cool is that? And I'll we'll just finish him off with an arrow shot. Just imagine that, like, happening in real time. Right, your ranger here just kicks him into the uh, path of this fighter who sucker punches them and then suddenly get an arrow to the back. Ouch. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and end turn. Now our brigand here is looking to get a piece of the fighter, but or the brawler. We're not gonna let them do that. We're gonna shift over. Oh man. Okay, what I can do is Suppressing Shot. Thankfully, our fighter here will still throw in some additional attacks, and BOOM! <laughs> Just like that, they're done. Now, why don't we see this play out in real time? Well, in more real-ish time, right? Look at that. <laughs> It's like a one-two. Interestingly enough, our ranger here did most of the work. They're the ones kind of just like flipping around their arena. Our fighter is just... Fortunately, being a melee combat tent, it's, it's a little tough to get them in range sometimes. You know, it worked out, right? <laughs> Brawler here put out a bunch of supplementary attacks and... Uh, Certainly without them, this would have been a much trickier fight. Hmm. Do I want to add... Hmm. Maybe I'll just use... Healing Spell. They have sent a lot of people after you. What exactly have you done? I'm still trying to work that out. There was drink involved. <laughs> What's your motivation? Basically, this is like medieval, dude, where's my car? I guess it would be like, dude, where's my horse? 
They took from me. I need to take back what's mine. Ooh, mysterious. Well, Constance, looks like we have ourselves a good old-fashioned quest. United together with a, with a common cause. Maybe their motives are a little, little un, uh, dissimilar, but we can't be the only ones this gang is causing trouble for. There must be others who need our help. Agree, unlock side quests. You know what, let's do that. You're right, we should seek out danger and confront it. Yeah, don't be reactive, be proactive. Alright, location, interaction, quest, huh? You there! What can we do for you? The dead have risen and torment me at every turn. If you defeat them, I shall make it worth your while. Except gain reward on completion. Uh, yeah, sure. You have our word. We will defeat your tormentors. Hmm. Handle the undead. Oh yeah, this little... little under-the-bridge area. Got stopped by a carriage and oh my god, these are a lot of skeletons. They kind of sort of have us surrounded. Um... Alright, so what I can do is probably get Edith here behind the skeleton, get them out of range. And then we can... Oop. So this is like one of the things, one of the quibbles I have with the UI right now. It's purely a muscle memory thing where sometimes you forget to switch characters, so you end up doing actions for one character when you mean to do it for another. It is a little bit frustrating and... You know, something I might have to get used to, but I wonder if perhaps that can be remedied or mitigated somehow. Alright, so what I want to do is get them in the range. What I can actually do is a uh, quick shot. Boom! Skeleton crumbles into dust, just like that. However, there's not like much else we can do without movement, so I guess we'll end the turn now. Oh. Other skeletons were in attack range, so they ended up hurting each other. Ain't that swell. So that's like the other cool part, right? You can, if, with some careful manipulation, you can perhaps maneuver enemies into the attack ranges of other enemies. You could just like have them beat each other up, right? If you're really crafty, you could like go through an entire battle without landing, without like throwing a single blow yourself, which is pretty cool, right? Lots of lots of ways to go about uh, these fights, which is awesome. Okay. Fortunately, our hero here only can do... Really can't do much, so I guess it's going to be up to... Constance here to kind of work things out. I think what we'll do is bring them over here and put them over here. I'll just uh, shoot this fell in the face. All right. Unfortunately, Edith here is probably going to be eating a lot of damage. I wonder if I should have maybe hit this other skeleton here. Mm. Maybe we can at least suppressing shot this one over here. Prevent them from moving. Okay, so it's for less damage because uh, the armor helped to protect them. That's pretty cool. Uh-oh! <laughs> Constance is now surrounded. Unfortunately, none of them are next to the rock, so I can't head smash them. Alright, only one of them is paying attention to Constance, actually. Man, why are they both dash cards? Uh, see me the 
mitigate Constance's damage, so... Okay, so getting downed doesn't uh, let them follow up. I guess, because... Can't let them punch down? I don't know. Um... Oh, get... Ah, oh, see, this is what I was talking about. I messed up. I wanted to move uh, Edith, not Constance, so... Try that again. Depending on the difficulty, you do get a number of retries. Unfortunately, it's like dependent on difficulty, which kind of sucks because I feel like in a game like this, you're probably going to be more prone to moving the wrong character. So, kind of swear to wish they would divorce uh, retries from you know difficulty. All right, make sure Edith is moving. All right, and now we end turn. Let them advance. Poor skeleton here can't get up because they got another skeleton on top of them. Man, don't you hate it when that happens? Okay. I guess one thing I can appreciate is that they don't select any character when you start your turn, so you won't like muscle memory and your way into moving the wrong character to start. Still might be annoying for other reasons, but. Alright, so we can actually just take these folks out. Easy. Uh, Constance, uh, shoot this one. Just like that. And for kicks, why don't I... Or actually, I should move Constance. Move him in front of the skeleton so he can combo him. Probably won't need it, but... Yeah, definitely won't need it. Constance is gonna shoot him dead. Like that. Kind of like the slow-mo that plays when you land the final blow, and we can just continue. Alright, I can pick Jab, Long Strike, Quick Strike. Maybe I'll do Long Strike. Thank you so much. I don't know how to express my thanks. You can start by giving us the reward you promised. Sheesh! <laughs> Edith is just... They're in it for the money, that's it. Nothing else. I guess I can at least appreciate that, right? Don't worry too much about the state of the world as long as you kind of survive from day to day, right? Just just go about your life one, one step at a time, quarter mile at a time. It's about drive, it's about power, something like that. Oh, that. In which case, take your pick. Well, I guess we get another selection of cards. Hmm get twin shot oh that is two momentum well in a game like fights in tight spaces where most of the time your momentum will be restricted to three higher momentum cards might be a bit or you might have to be a bit more picky about the higher momentum cards but in a game like this where you can up your momentum to like five by just having more people uh, it's a little different I wonder if I should get separate. I feel like if I get surrounded, this would come in handy. Then again, I feel like the other fights, you don't get surrounded quite as much, so maybe I'll get that twin shot. Yep, and that's that quest completed. Oh wait, there's another one up here. A group of knights have gone rogue and are attacking our village. Can you teach them a lesson so that they leave us alone? Except gain gold on completion. <laughs> Man, the town enforcers acting on their own behalf and intimidating the common folk. Boy, howdy. Let's, uh, let's stop them. <laughs> Quest, Night Tales. Mission, defeat the knights. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna... We're gonna show them who has honor. We got here. Axe Man. Jeez, oh, they deal a lot of damage. So does this one. The cleric applies vulnerable. So if we let them hit us, then we're gonna be we're gonna be in for a world of extra hurt later. So we should probably try not doing that. All right, I think I should probably have my uh, ranger act here. 18 damage. So we'll do that. 
that stylish double shot. Man, it's like straight out of a character action game. Okay, well, we definitely don't want uh, Constance to get hit here, because that's like a third of their health, so we'll move them forward. Maybe we can just quick shot this fella. Soften him up for next turn. Shift over ever so slightly. I do like how they maneuver themselves such that you have to kind of work. You'll have to work if you want to get your big combo attacks in, so. Let's focus on taking this fell out, because they're going to, like, super hurt. So. Hmm. Quick shot. All right, they still stand. Not anymore. I like how even the knights flop over like rag dolls when they're defeated. Okay, should I move the brawler? Yeah, shift them this way. And end turn. All right, interesting place to move. But what if I just, um... Yeah, let's stick you over here. Oh, now that I think about it, what if I... Can I try that again? What if I moved you over here instead? Yeah, and you can just go ahead and put your head against that catapult. <laughs> or ballista. <laughs> that takes care of them. Not so fast. There's more incoming. See, so I forget. I don't know if this was in fights in tight spaces, but now there are certain fights that will be like multi-part, like this one. I think there's only like a part one and a part two, but now we're facing off against the uh, archers here. They will try to stay away as if they can. And a pikeman. Deal six damage from up to two tiles away. Oof. Alright, so we probably want to get Edith out of the way. So we'll have them shift through the enemy. And definitely want to get Constance out of the way too. So we'll just have them move over here. Look at that. And then we'll actually take them out with this one. Right? Oh, nuts! I forgot. Range 2. Okay, this is fine. I think the combo strike should be enough to take them out, right? Dang it, why aren't you showing me the Pikeman's HP now? Well, it is a demo battle, so... There we go. One down. Let's see. Uh-oh! Now we got ourselves a proper sword and board knight facing off against us. Swordsman. <laughs> Even the description note knows it. It's a classic knight. It, when you think about knight, this is what you think about, right? A heavily armored fella wearing a shield, uh, wielding a sword, maybe a mace. Anyways, we should we should take care of them. And have uh, Constance here double shot him. Surprisingly enough, not didn't gain any block. Oh, weird. Now it's showing block. Okay, well, three arrows does it in. You can pretend we just shot him at like the weak spots, the gaps in the armor, right? That's how they're usually done. I want to get everyone else into position here, so we'll move Edith over and see where everyone goes. Hmm. You know, I'm not quite sure what they're trying to go with here. Like, they could have just like stayed where they were, pointed their bows at Edith, and that would have been definitely a trickier situation to get out of. They think they're the protagonists of this story. They think, oh, hey, there's probably, like, something over here, right? If they shoot this log barrier, 
have it collapse on top of Edith. Is that what they're trying to do? Right? They think, oh, hey, you're going to shoot the arrow at Edith, and Edith's going to be like, aha, you missed. And then Bowman's going to point behind him. Not quite. And then suddenly the barrier just falls apart, and the logs just fall all over Edith, and, and then that's how you defeat him. Yeah. Too bad it's not that kind of game. <laughs> Alright. Let's handle this. Best part is I can actually do some hit and run tactics here. So what I'll do is have Edith step in range. We'll just do ourselves a front kick. So now this attack uh, does push, but if there's nowhere to go, then they'll just incur some more damage and boom! <laughs> Since uh, the bowman here was in attack range, and the hunter is like, Hey, let me help you out! And just looses an arrow real quick, like. How cool is that? Alright, so what I'll do is... Uh, get in front here. And... Uh, and turn. Well, you tried to hit me in the face with an arrow, not so fast, buddy. All right, two HP, so I might as well might as well keep pressing. All right, press the advantage. <laughs> Just push him. Right, we're gonna defeat him with a push. You're not even worthy of a fist to the face. Take an open paw, huh? Did they block that? I guess they did. <laughs> Gain four block every turn. All right. Well, that's fine. We can still take him out. Okay, why are the cards not responding anymore? Uh... Oh, okay, none of the interface wants to respond. Um... I'm gonna try to connect the controller real quick. Maybe I can work with that. Again, it's a demo, so there's bound to be some finicky stuff in here. Rather unfortunate. I was on the roll with this run too. Oh, okay. Whew. I would prefer mouse and keyboard with this, but you know what? You make do with what you got. Um. All right. How do I switch characters? Oh, D-pad. All right. Cool. And we'll select quick. Quick strike up. Okay, that's not working either. What happens if I click restart? I'm assuming that will just, um, cause me to just restart the entire run. Alright, can I make this go away now? Press B, okay. Hmm. Are you sure you want to restart the game? I'm assuming this is just restart the entire run kind of deal, but... A bit of a pickle here, so sadly... Our tale of Edith and Constance will go unfinished. Or... oh! Okay. It's not restart the run, it's just restart the fight, but... Still kind of up the creek and out the, without a paddle. Okay, I'm gonna quit the main menu. See how that goes. Play... Ooh, load game. Hmm. Alright, uh... What I'm going to do is try restarting. I'm gonna try restarting the game, so I'll be right back.
At least I guess one benefit of restarting is you get to hear that pretty sweet intro riff. It's like kind of cool because fights in tight spaces had this kind of like lo-fi-ish but still intense techno-esque soundtrack. And this game kind of still has a bit of a vibe of that but throws in a bit of like more uh, medieval style orchestral folksy uh, riffs to it as well which is interesting. All right. Yep, can load the game right back into it. Oh my god, what? Are you for real? Unfortunately... Okay, though, I seriously restarted my game and now... It's just like, all the way broken. Oh no. Man! Just because I dared to push a, a foe instead of... What if I... What if I just, like, went to a new game? Overwrite? Yeah, let's do it. Um... Alright. I guess we'll... Try Noble again. We can... You can see that they... It's not just, um, you know, straight numbers to the stats. They do assist you in some other ways as well, like... Uh, if you ha they'll try to uh, manipulate the draw in a way so that you'll have a certain number of movement cards and uh, you know give you a couple of options for each character so that way you're not like up the creek without a paddle but on the other hand you have the hardest difficulty which is like uh, yeah we're not we're just throwing you to the wolves here so you better balance things out or else Alright, I'm gonna try Noble, and uh, let's go with Fighter this time, see how this goes. Well trained in a variety of combat styles and weapon techniques, the Fighter is one of the most versatile combatants. I'm guessing they're like a jack-of-all-trades kind of style. Although they do start with a sword and board. A variety of attacks. <laughs> Flash kick, just straight from fights in tight spaces. It's a very different kind of flash kick though, because... No, actually, I think it's like still a somersault kick, so very much not. Alright, so what I'll do is, um... Just laugh it off. Gain gold. We uh, we've all had we'd all had a lot to drink. We all said things we regret. You specifically. And you still owe me my share of the winnings. Like, a bit of context, but just enough. And still leave some space open so you can kind of fill in the blanks from there. 20 coins. One day your charm is going to run out, and then what will you have left? <laughs> My looks? I mean, I guess some people appreciate a rugged looking fellow, right? Soon the decision will be made for you, and you're going to make an enemy you can't simply brush aside. Oh, like these guys. Okay. Right. Hopefully, I am hoping that this hand bug doesn't persist. Yeah, that sword looks positively tiny against this fella here. They got like a big frame. All right, good. I can select cards again. I have a heavy strike. Oh. I wonder if they're specifically throwing out heavies because well, doesn't matter. Um, oh, adjacent to an enemy. Actually, what I want to do is just hit him for 20. And back the heck off. Go ahead and, and turn. Alright, spend X momentum to deal 6x damage. For some reason it's 30? I'm assuming it's because it's a melee attack. Right. So the variety of perks Roger has here allows this charge strike to deal a lot more damage, but we don't quite need that much. We'll just give him a quick jab. Maybe move over here and... Yeah, just defeat him. <laughs> Look at that! Just a super... 
su still super maneuverable, even with all that stuff on him. It's wild, man. It's wild. I also do like that the brawlers here have giant, giant, I'm guessing they're irons with spikes. It's like the medieval version of a nail bat. It's a nail iron. I guess it does let you appreciate the music here, right? Hear that mix of like folk and uh, you know, the mix of folk and uh, techno here. I'll just let them come to me, because I will completely blow them away. So yeah, we'll heavy strike this fella. Oh, they stepped over. All right, we're gonna do this differently. Gonna flash kick, and then heavy strike. Oh. I guess they always step away no matter what. Um, one more time. Yeah, we'll just take this fell out. Okay, we can't defeat them both this turn, but we'll get them next turn. Weep, deal six damage to adjacent characters in a five tile arc. We don't quite need that, we just need to do big damage to one of them. Alright, let's see a replay of this. For funsies. I know Fights in Tight Space has got DLC out, Weapon of Choice. I haven't picked that up yet, but once I do. Uh, I will still wait until I get my Live 2D to actually play it. Really, really thinking about just contacting uh, the folks who are in charge of my Live 2D model. <laughs> I know they're like super busy, but... I don't know, I'm getting antsy. Just, man! I feel like I can really pop off once I once I get that. In good time, in good time, right? I'm just a little, little fish in a pond. It's gotta be patient. Uh, I'll actually get counter. Need a few more blocks. Alright, so this dialogue is the same, actually. We'll move on. Walter. Alright, so, I guess, for the sake of the demo quest, your second companion is always gonna be the same. Uh, but it helps. Right, they want to tailor the experience, give you a taste of uh, what the full game has, so this is cool. Yep. Come on in, Walter. Uh, definitely could use your arrows and your bow. Right. We have Walter's bow and Roger's axe. Now we just need, like, a sword or a staff. I don't know, that would be cool. <laughs> sure, random stranger, let's fight some bad guys together. back on the streets. Look at that. <laughs> They're in the corner and they get cornered by some thugs here. I have to take care of this right quick, right? But man, it's almost like they're setting us up for a, for a combo strike here, so why don't we indulge them? I think this would be better if I used Walter here. Shoot him like that. <laughs> and our fighter just backhands him. Pretty amusing. Um, Alright, we should start moving Roger as well. You know, usually it should be the other way around. The ranger should be, like, behind the fighter. Right? Like, get behind me, doctor. Oh, they are closing in. Okay. Um, Alright, I need a better vantage point. Alright. None of them are in range yet. So let's see. Fighter can take a little piece out of the brigand here. Maintains range, which is nice.
All right, can have our ranger here slip beside him, hit him with a quick shot, soften them up as well. And actually, let's have him quick strike as well. Spend the rest of the momentum to deal five damage. Just hit him with a fist and, oh no, is that a debuff? Or no, I guess that was like, uh, hey, you're all, the rest of your momentum's been used. Turns over. Let everyone else do their thing. Alright, this one actually won't be so bad, I think. Uh, let's see. What I can do is... want a heavy strike him, but I don't have much of a choice here. Flash kick is gonna put him too far away. Okay, probably want to make sure Walter here doesn't get hit, so just have him slip over here and. Okay, so Flash Kick won't stop him, but put him at range, get things set up for next turn. Bet this Ranger back here is just like, God damn it, y'all! Move out of the way! I can't get a clean shot if you're all standing in my path! Hey, that's the nature of uh, bad guys, right? They're supposed to be more uncoordinated in contrast to our hero's coordinated tactics. So we'll have Walter here slip to the side. We can have uh, Roger. We can have Roger slip to the other side. All right. Yeah. So these these cars are interesting because you need space behind you, right? The card won't work if you can't do everything on it, which is interesting. Just to do that. Oh man! One, two, just like that, and they're done. Uh, not much else we can do, so end turn. Alright, Brawler has gotten their breath in, they're coming back in. They're like, alright, now I'm ready to I'm ready to give you what for. Fortunately, we have just one HP, so. Just get ground slammed right into the uh, hay bales, man. Unfortunate. We can have our ranger here just flank him, poke him in the face with an arrow. <laughs> the side of the head, actually. I actually want to see that. Again. Look at them. They didn't even have to uh, get out of their corner. They just let the enemies come to them. Took them all out without a single hit. Again, this is a demo, and the game's still in development, but Fights in Tight Spaces also had optional objectives you could try going for. Usually they were things like defeat all enemies within a certain number of turns, or uh, protect this other fella on the field, or make your way over to this specific space and pick up a briefcase. And it's not in here yet. I guess it works out for the better, because it lets you just focus in on the party-based gameplay and the Fights in Tight Spaces move and beat up enemies. Hmm, I don't know if I need healing spell, so let's get quick kick, because it will work with both characters. Alright, so now we got ourselves the same side quest again. You there! What can we do for you? The dead have risen in. Oh, this one's just agent. All right, let's uh, let's do it. Or actually, I don't think there's a time limit. At least in the demo, there's not a time limit. You can just like see what it, this is all about, and then we can actually move onwards. 
Hmm. I want to go to the trader or the blacksmith. Uh, let's go to the blacksmith. Now you can pick. Uh, it's like like any good fantasy themed game, right? You can equip your characters with stuff. Uh, one thing that I wish this game would do is just like let you see an indication of. Uh, you know, which characters can equip which weapons, and if, um, you maybe compare stuff to, because you can't quite do that, right? You can see what the item will give you, and that's, like, the extent of it. They also have rarities, which is amusing. can't afford the poison blade. Okay, what if I just got like two capes of haste, I guess, add one speed? Did I get a magic sword? Two additional weapon damage. I assume if I press it back, um, I'll leave the shop and won't be able to re-enter. Yeah, screw it. Getting capes of haste. You get a cape! You get a cape! Everyone gets a cape! Ah, good. They can equip it. Alright. But yeah, you can see you have room for three party members, which is a nice number, right? Anywhere from three to six is usually what I like for groups. Right, so enough folks to kind of play off of each other and what have you. Oh, right. I go downwards, not upwards. Another back alley brawl. Alright. Now they got shields and maces. A little bit trickier. Okay, so we can have Ranger slip to the side here. And then we'll have Roger start beating him up. Walter follows up. Isn't that the coolest? Mm. Alright, I still have two momentum, so... What I think I want to do is just have them march up and perhaps counter. That way it'll he'll soak up the attack from the robber here and then counter. Right, just hit him with the sword. Also, rather fearsome robber. They're pretty smart coming in with like a little buckler and a shield like that. Fortunately, that would be the end of them. Uh-oh, big guys. <laughs> we have our Walter here surrounded. Bleeding is a negative status effect that can be stacked. It deals damage equal to the current bleeding value of a character at the start of their turn and diminishes by one each turn. Oh no. Thankfully, we still have Slip, so... Man, if I put Walter in the corner, that'll leave him super vulnerable. On the other hand... It'll also be available for combo attacks, which is probably what I need right now, so we'll do that. You know what they say, no risk, no reward. Okay, unfortunately, all of Roger's attacks push, which will cause damage to Walter. So I think what I'll need to do is just have... Walter and shoot him, which is fine because these robbers only have don't have that much HP, so works out. All right, two momentum. So I think best we can do is a uh, front kick. Oh, our blacksmith here is gonna do some sick combo moves unwittingly.
Yeah, I think I'll leave it like this. And turn. Look at that. Pushes them back inadvertently. Alright. I think I can work with this. You have 15 HP, so... I just do a shot and... Oh, nuts. Huh. You're saying I can... Sweep? With... The Ranger? What does he do? Like a spread shot? Oh. A spin kick. Again, it's a demo, so they probably don't have, like, every sound effect in. Alright, we'll finish him off. And we should probably get Roger here out of the way. Unfortunately, we spent, like, all of our momentum defeating this fella over here. Okay, what if I tried having Roger slip to over here? And then we just have them kind of... Oh, you know what? That worked out a lot better. Huh. Oh. And, um... Oh, I see. Sweep takes up two. Alright, so what I want to do is just get Roger out of the way. Like that. We're good. Well, I'm guessing that big attack is forcing him to recharge. So, free round, I suppose? Or actually, it looks like they're going to buff the enemy, probably. So, why don't we have... close them in. Now's our chance! Just fucking go to town on him. Uh... nuts. Maybe I want to... do that one differently. I try that again. Alright, that's it. A lot of freebies. Gotta be extra careful with what I do now. What I'm gonna do is heavy strike. 29 damage. Still get the buff off, but. Should be a bit more manageable. Um... Alright. We'll just keep on wailing away on the blacksmith here. Yep, just like that, they're done. Alright. Have to get Roger out of the way. And, uh, you know what? Long strike him. <laughs> Could you imagine seeing that in real life? Just backflip kicks away and then closes in super quick. Like, before before they can even react, right? You just imagine them getting kicked upside the chin, like, whoa! Right, their their neck just like swing, their head swings all the way up. And by the time they have leveled themselves, uh, Roger's already closing in with the second hit of the combo. Let's see this play out. Look at that, boom, boom. It's really satisfying when you can line up all your party members and get like the get them all just following up. And when you play Fire Emblem, especially uh, Awakening onwards, because I think this was like a mechanic in that game too. Uh, certain characters, if you had them like next to enemies when you attacked them, they could follow up with a little extra damage. Look at that. They just close in and wail away on them. Just like that. Yeah! <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, which card should we pick? Channel target character gains attuned for one turn. Or I could just do a sucker punch for eight. I won't do quick strike. Or I could choose to skip, right? Current deck is doing well as it is. Maybe I don't need to clutter it up do that. Who goes there? <laughs> Easy there. I mean no harm. I represent an organization that brings balance to the kingdom. We need people like you. P 
people like me. Not sure balance is quite my style. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit more boisterous. You've made some inroads to bring down this gang than my own people have in weeks. If you join us, we will give you the resources to take the fight to them. Alright. What am I say? Who am I to say no? That's the sort of resources I can get behind. I suggest you use this to get prepared. The battle ahead will not be easy. Alright, so now we're gonna defeat the outlaws. Fight! So after beating up the blacksmith, we're going to the forge. Actually, this isn't a forge. This is actually like a kitchen. Look at those spit roasts in the background there. Hmm, I'd love to get a nice bite of those. And on the probably related note, what did everyone have for dinner? I actually had like a quick dinner tonight. I just ate chicken strips and mozzarella sticks. Yeah, it's usually like my go-to quick dinner because I usually keep those like frozen. I like have boxes of them frozen in the freezer and if like don't feel like cooking, I'll just uh, throw them in my air fryer and fry them and just have myself a quick, quick meal. So, uh, helped me out a lot, especially when I l used to live closer to a supermarket. I wish I could like move somewhere that would put me close to a supermarket again. That was real convenient. Just being able to uh, go out and walk my way there, man. Good times. I think I might actually have to split these two up. Alright, go over here. It's a good thing I have this counter card, because... So, what I can do... Let's have Roger close in. Oh! See, I picked the wrong character again. I wanted to move Roger. Close him in. Give him a little extra block and then have him counterattack for big damage. Oh, I forgot. They push! No counters for you, buddy. Dang. Alright. Well, I can do separate instead. One of them won't separate, but the other will. Alright. Push his enemies one tile in the opposite direction. Like so. Okay, it was just the one, I guess? Alright, what if I just, like, kept beating this one up then? Deal damage and push. Tricky. Okay. Let's uh, get you out of the way here. It's for you, Roger. Go rejoin your ally. Over here. Oh man, they're gonna get surrounded. This might not be the best option. We're gonna do it anyway. It says deal 5 damage to characters in a 5 tile arc, which I have to assume is like really wide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very wide. Alright, and then we'll have um, Walter get the heck out of there. Otherwise, they're gonna be in for a world of hurt. Hmm. One momentum left, which we can use to just. Cook the spell in the face, soften up for our last turn. Alright, things are looking up, things are looking up. Hmm. It's almost like they knew which cards I was gonna draw and reposition themselves such that. 
Roger here couldn't use the heavy strike on the character who would obviously need to be heavy struck. Alright, so you can't... You can't move through allies. I guess that makes sense. Still unfortunate. Alright. Uh, we can take... No, we can't. Um... Yeah, alright. We're just gonna have to play mitigation here. And then get Roger out of the way. Alright, we're good. Obviously they close in, but... This should be fine, because we can actually get Roger out of there. It's a flash kick. Oh, I forgot. You're ranged. That's eh, fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. What can do is shoot you with an arrow, and then we get everyone the heck out of there. Yeah, you know what? We'll go with this. Boom! Rather unfortunate. Huh. What is this trickster planning? Then again, they might not be planning. Um... Man, why couldn't you give me any good push cards now? Because I can... Push this fella. I would have pushed this fella into the... The heated area. That would have been fun. But, alas. Actually, I could still do that. Why don't I... Why don't I... Switch that up. I can separate you. And... And long strike you. And then... Hmm. Okay, so we won't quite defeat you next round. What we can do is get you out of the way, like that. <laughs> All right. I guess it's Rogers or uh, Walter's turn to start doing some stuff. Aimed shot. Boom! Headshot. Boom! Neck shot. That's what it kind of looked like, right? Mm, nah, heavy strike wouldn't be worth it. Not for the two momentum, so... I think what I should do is just... Get him out of the way. Move him over this way. We'll have Roger just, like, start marching up on the trickster here. And turn. Oh yeah, now that's what I want to see. Get right into melee range, sucker. Oh my god. You are in for a world of hurt. And as for you, eat arrow. Uh, let's see. Dang, none of my cards here are going to be enough to take them out. sidestep and turn. It's almost like they know they're cornered. Okay. I'm gonna finish this with style. Boom! Well, sure was nice to meet you, but unfortunately I must now veal off. Too bad your goose is cooked. You're not bringing home any bacon tonight. This is what you get for starting beef with us. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, aha, we got them with superior numbers. And they're like, oh no, but they have superior tactics. 
Even with all their fancy repositioning to mitigate damage. It wasn't enough. We just pick them off one by one. Did not stand a chance. And ragdolling is funny sometimes. Or unfortunate body. Just leaning on top. At least they were on the firewood and not like the heated stuff in the back. Ouch. I was watching like an action show where they were fighting in like a the back of a fast food restaurant and think someone used a hot oil fryer as like an offensive weapon. Yeah, I you can imagine the rest. I don't want to. <laughs> Alright, what should I take? Heal all. So one time heal. Or I could do advancing shot. I could do another separate. Or I could just leave things as they are. Which I think I will do. They fight using abilities the likes of which I have never experienced. We call them the attuned. If it isn't everyone's favorite lurking gentleman. We have been monitoring, monitoring instances of individuals with access to these supernatural abilities. And it's only getting worse. By harnessing this power, this gang has taken over this region. Imagine what a real army could do with it. So how do we fight back? We have made sure we have access to a few attuned individuals ourselves. They may be of use to you. And so we have Alice Hatchet, a sorcerer. They come with three, three extra cards. Wow, look at that. Fireball, enchant weapon, healing spell. I wish, I wish this came up with like a kind of like a zoom in, a full sized version of the cards. So you can see what it did. Oh, we'll hire him. Fancy, as well as all of that stuff. Can they fight? <laughs> Believe me, I can fight. The source of the gang's control is an old monk, one of the first attuned that we've dealt with. His lust for power has driven him down a dark path. Powerful, lusty monk. Got it. <laughs> you have to put it like that, Roger. Like the spy master just completely sandba sandbags it. He has a manner that he is using as a base of operations and is using the outlaw gang to defend it. Get past them and you just might stand a chance of finding him. Be warned, once you enter you will not be able to leave until he or you has been defeated. Where should we go? Tavern? Blacksmith? Trader? We already saw what the blacksmith does. Why don't we... See what the trader does. Oh, it's cards. Okay, so this is like fights in tight spaces. Right? You can choose to purchase cards, you can choose to upgrade. They have variety, they have separate upgrade costs. Yeah, looks like the ones I can upgrade make the card stronger in a way. They up the numbers. them deal more damage. Oh, wow. Some cards just can't be upgraded. Hmm. Interesting. You know, some of them also improve in other ways. Like, this one decreases the cost to zero. But... Hmm. I should go for like the highest damage increase. So this is like six, this is nine, four. All right, I guess we're doing quick strike. You can also choose to remove cards, right? But that costs money, right? 60 coins. Deck, uh, keeping your deck lean and uh, efficient. It's usually the name of these deck building games, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, why don't we try the side quests again? Um, Night Tales. Let's see how this goes with a party of three. Should probably be a bit more manageable with three folks, right?
you, know, you can see they have a specific ability they'll support uh, if they're in range. So they have long strike, quick shot, and this one just has like a, you know, a, a close range hit, right? Quick strike, I think. Have Alice slip over to the side this way. Um, don't want to move Walter because he'll become he'll come in range of the Axeman and uh, eating a third of his HP and damage probably isn't the best. So what I think we'll do is here we'll get locked up here. Separate. Oh, I think we deal a little bit of damage to Alice, but that's okay. Oh, I guess we could have Walter just sucker punch him with a shot. Oh, okay, range of two. Also, you can see Alice also pushes. So if you really want to, you could set up like a little Rube Goldberg machine of just follow-up attacks. As I will now demonstrate. Let's see. Oh no, I'm not gonna demonstrate because it's fine. The fella's just gonna eat it. Alright, you know what? We'll do it this way instead. Just like that, they are cut down. <laughs> okay, that's a fancy sweep. Oh! Yeah, did you see that? Pushed him into range of the ranger, so he's like, all right, let me loose a quick arrow at him. Boom! <laughs> just like that. And the way they whipped around, too. They were just like, bloop. Right, just all stylish like that. That takes care of them. Not so fast, there's more coming. All right, I gotta remember, don't push them into a wall, because you'll bug out the UI, and then you'll be unable to continue. I'm gonna at least get to the end of one run here. Oh, boy bit more danger. I don't know why Alice dropped all the way over there. You could say it's like a bit of disorientation, right? It's like, quick, get to the corner. This is how they ended up. All right. Ah, that's a bowman. Okay. No so matter what, someone's going to be eating some damage. Fortunately, I don't have any block cards with which to mitigate that. I could have you strike this fella. It'll be a one-shot kill on the pikeman there. Fortunately, puts him in range of uh, the bowman here. Roger here won't be able to defeat uh, either of them, so we should probably get them out of the way. Or you know what? I could probably have Roger just like stand in place and block the shot. He'll take one damage, as opposed to Alice, who will take five if we leave that arrow alone. Meantime, just have him sucker punch this bowman in the face. Alright. Not too bad. So far, not too bad. The way to just get out of the way. Okay. Since I have counter, what I could do is... Roger in front. Let him set up like that. Um, we could actually do a separate. No, wait, no. Oh, no, I could do that, yeah. So I'll still have two momentum. And now we can finally move Alice out of the way here. So we'll do that. Fortunately, Walter has no targets, so we'll just have to let that last momentum go unused, but it's okay. So far, we've only lost one HP this fight.
Oh. Well, since they're all next to Ar uh, Roger here, why don't we uh, enchant Roger's attack? Once again, Roger, you will slip through. Strike you, and I guess long strike you. Won't be enough to defeat, but we'll get there. All right, we don't need to do much else. Just quick shot you in the face, and it's over. All right, we can just continue. Um. Unarmed, so this card's gonna be useless. These two cards, eh. Only usable by one character, so maybe we'll skip. That particular group of knights won't be bothering you again. Here's your reward, along with our thanks. 75 coins. I wonder if I should have waited to visit a shop until I cleared this quest. Ah, well, they say hindsight is 2020, right? Let's do the skeleton man's. Now that we got more people, this should be a bit more manageable. Maybe this was the kind of quest that you were not meant to take on with a party of two. Although I did okay. This took a lot of hits. Definitely doable. A lot more doable with, um, three. That's for sure. Okay. So what I could do is... Well, quick, quick won't do much because they have, um, they can advance one, fortunately. Yeah, and also deal one push. What I could do is enchant Roger's weapon, perhaps. his damage and then kind of let him man not even that's enough to take out the enemy all right whatever oh because yeah he doesn't use he doesn't use his weapon he just uses a uh, his foot. Alright. In that case, let's look to the side over here. It's for you, Alice. Step over here. You know what? Just finish him off. I could have used the other card too. Didn't matter. Watch everyone close on in. Huh. Wisely enough, they're going after the weaker folk. Hmm. Man, why do all these skeletons... Well, I guess the skeleton swords... People only have a range of one. Warriors and the fighters... They... The fighters have an effective range of two, because they can advance one. What we can do is... Roger over this way. Now, actually... It would probably be better if I had him get right in front of here. Get ready to counter. Then... Yeah, we can have Walter slip through here. Suppress this fella. Shoot this fella. Alright. Good. Slowly but surely, we're thinning the horde here. Now do are going for a pincer strike on Roger. Or Walter.
Man, no melee or block attacks for uh, Walter here, so... Or Roger. Why don't we put him over here, then? And then... Walter... What do you have? All right. You know what? This works out. Retreating shot. Get out of the way. And Rogers does a quick backhand. Throw you down as well. Once again, everyone is safe. Alright, we'll get that set up. And... Okay. Aim shot is... Two... We can do healing spell. Let's do that. Just heal a little bit of health. This is like one of the trickier things about fights in tight spaces. Sources of healing were much more limited. You did have cards that healed you, but they would usually be the likes of this card is usable will be unusable for the rest of the battle, so you still had to plan your moves carefully because you know you would get your butt kicked otherwise. Um Alright, can do this flash kick to finish him off. You have just one HP, so I'll just shoot you in the face. Alright. Let's see a replay of this. Didn't get to do any fancy fireball tricks, but that's okay. Oh yeah. Look at that rebound combo. Cut him down. I feel like these replays were like a bit cooler in fights in tight spaces. If only because I don't know. I guess I could like head cannon the fights seeming a lot more fluid, even if they weren't. Could at least pretend that it was less less jank. Uh oh. Do we do we stop? Alright, can we just quit replay? Continue. All right, select a card. I could choose to shift or head smash or overwatch. Support attacks deal double damage this turn. This cost one momentum though. Mm, let's go with shift. I like having more movement options. Thank you so much. I don't know how to express my thanks. Oh, the reward you promised. In that case, take your pick. Another card. What if I don't? Refused card offer. Ah, oh, what? You're not going to give me any money? Like, even, like, 10 gold? I don't know. I do like how the currency is still in pounds. We're, like, in... Not England, I'm assuming. All right, you see Ironfell, Ironford, Coalcaster, Ironbridge. I wonder if these are, like, names of the locations in the past. Anyways, there's one more location to go to. Find the old monk. This translates into, like, uh, three waves of battles. So you start off here in this entryway. You see the stairs leading down. The music is shockingly peaceful. But that will change. That will change. Yeah, you like that. How you like me now? And... Let's block for funsies. It's not quite in range. We can have Roger do is... Flank him. Just hit him for a lot of damage. Like how I barely flinched to that, but definitely flinched to that. Just enter ragdoll mode. Mm, let me get Alice out of that corner. Move him over there. Um, yeah, we'll end things there. Another archer comes down. 
Wait, hold up. Why is the outlaw facing this way yet? So it shows they're gonna show the attack line is shown in this direction. They're gonna do like an offhand snipe. Right? It's like Walter's like, alright, I'm gonna try to flank him, and then Outlaw's like, not so fast. Just whips to the side, smacks him, pumps him full of arrows. Too bad for them, that's not gonna happen. I will do is quick kick. Knock you back. Not today, son. Move you over here. Hey, you settle down just for a bit. Just wait there while I reload my cards. I restrict your movement. Now all you can do is go forward. Ah, jeez. Okay, that's definitely a bug. Because you are not you are not pointing this way, man. <laughs> They're like, oh no, movement out of the side of their eye. They were so focused on a flanking attack, they forgot to look forward. At least that's what I'm headcanoning. Alright. Let's wombo combo this sucker, shall we? Just like that. Look at that, we're right next to this fella. And, uh... Alright, now to get Walter out of the way. Mm, yeah, this works right. Now, <laughs> I need to move one more tile away. Alright, we can try that again. At least we'll get to see the sick combo again, so... What if I dash instead? I won't really need to slip, given what I do. Use our three momentum on Walter over here. Oh. Really didn't need to. No, it's okay. The other two are out of danger. I'll roll with this. Where the heck are you aiming at? I guess they're kind of in a bind, right? Given their movement options. They could either get out of range of Alice or stay in range and have a shot next turn in. Well, no matter what they pick, it's going to end badly for them. So why don't we go ahead and uh, put them out of their misery here. Sweep. And... You know what, we'll actually just get the fuck back. Fireball! Boom. I'm sure the effects will get punched up eventually. You know what? For the heck of it, I'll just jab you once more with the staff. Alright, part two. I do like how in fights in tight spaces, our sorcerers here are perfectly capable of fighting in close range as well. They just, you know, have different options to consider. Oh boy, okay. So they're gonna counter. I don't know if I want to have um, Roger fight against the, the troublemaker. We'll leave him alone. Let's have Roger... Ah. 
All the cards I have are for Walter, though. Okay, what I'll do is move you over here. I guess Walter, I think, can put you over here. Yeah, can at least take out the Ranger, I guess. Aim shot. Oh, Alice is gonna be eating some damage, though. At six. Six, I think. I think we'll have Alice eat six. Can't run forever. I gotta pare the numbers down at some point, right? See, times like these are where uh, the other class might come in handy because they do have that one card that lets you reposition. But I'll just make do with what I have. Hmm. could do is... Oh! That's a slip. Alright. What I was hoping I could do is, like, get on the other side. Unfortunately, I don't have a card for that. But... That's okay. Still do a little bit of damage while putting them out of range to counterattack. Um... I should probably get Alice out of range as well. yourself up and uh, no one to fireball sadly fortunately Walter's got no targets either so this is what we got all right I think I see what I can do here Move you out of the way so Walter can stun this fella for a turn all right, so far so good. 18 HP. Or I could move to either side of an adjacent enemy. Mm. Oh wait, no, that's Walter's movement. Um, it's Alice's movement. Oh wait, no, they can also. Well, since Troublemaker is out of commission, I can do that. Oh, but... Hey, you know what? I do have a heal spell. Let's go buff up Walter here. Shoot him in the noggin. Oh! I guess it's because you do additional range damage. Yeah, alright. Cool. Managed to mitigate that. Uh oh, but now Roger is surrounded. Someone's going to be eating a lot of damage. I just have to decide which one. Should probably get Roger out of the way. Oh wait, no. Ah, I moved the wrong person. Try that again, because I want to shift Roger to the other side. Like that? Okay. So Alice is not being targeted. Roger is out of danger. Or, Walter's out of danger. I need to move Roger to the side. And I guess we can have him take out this troublemaker. Free up, free up some space, get a little breathing room. Ooh, I do have charge strike. We can just one-shot them. Although maybe we want to take care of this fella first. Hmm. 
Okay. We move you over here. And then have Roger shoot him. You still stand. Alright, fine. Separate. We'll separate your consciousness from your body. Alright, can't one-shot you anymore, but I can block. And probably don't want to counter, because I want that block to last, so... Just to soak that up. Alright, prepare another counter. Oh, okay. This is gonna be fun. So, what we'll do is... Get Alice... Get Alice out of the way. Move Roger in position. Make sure I pick a good card for this. Aim to shot. Just like that. <laughs> Enough damage, actually, so... They never got to counter me. Sucker. Oh, snap. Alice is in range of this fella. Six damage. Able to use magic attacks. Hmm. It's only Alice is in danger. You could have her block up. Just to soak up the attack, because I want you to remain behind. This fella, what if you have you slip to the side? Oh my god. This is going to be so sick, y'all. Check this out. Boom! And then a shot, and one more whack from behind. It's like, how you like me now? Oh, man. And you can actually finish off this enemy here, just like that. Hmm. I could get Alice out of the way, but... Yeah, she'll be able to soak up that, that attack, right? Doesn't say it bypasses block. Oh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Yep, minus six block. Oh well, can can just hand wave it by. You know, she's a tune. She can deflect the attack, right? Oh man, time for another wombo combo. Boom. Maybe not too much wombo actually. Okay. Now I probably want to get Alice out of there. And we'll move Roger forward and prepare a counter. And yeah, just hit him real quick. And they'll be taken out next turn. Like that. Just cut down. Alright. What we can actually do is... Just march him forward. Okay, so they're both two tiles. Should I quick kick? Try quick kick so that I can let Roger advance to full two spaces as well. Yeah, I guess we can wrap things up with sweep, right? Oh, this guy's some to skeleton. Okay, just generates additional mooks. Oh man. All right, Walter, you should probably you should probably get out there and start helping your allies. All right, skeletons down. Hmm. Oh, 
probably slip to the side here. So you can hit him with a charge strike. Yeah, everyone's healed up, so don't need to worry about that. Where are you going, man? Just waiting for target. Okay. Uh, make sure... Okay, two tiles. Just have them close in here. Now we're just gonna wombo them. Just gonna wombo them. Yep, I think this might be it, because we'll enhance... Roger's damage here. Uh, finish him off with a separate. Boom! <laughs> the monk is done. Is defeated. You have completed tight nights, uh, nights in tight spaces. Now do it again, but better. Thirty-one twenty-five points difficulty num noble continue. But yeah, that's that's what's in the demo. I. I'm really excited to see what comes, right? I want to see what the other classes can do, what other cards they have, what other, what, like how, how much trickier are the enemies going to get? How will they compensate for the fact that you get to control up to three people now? Although I was reading elsewhere in the forums where someone was asking, hey, are, is solo character run still going to be possible, right? In exchange for, you know, not gaining extra momentum and having a bit of flexibility and positioning, you do only have to worry about one character. So that might be a good trade-off, and I think one of them responded like, Yeah, we want to make sure solo character runs are still viable, right? So like, let you have your pick of how, uh, what group you can you want to have, like, roll through the story. So that's pretty cool. It would be pretty cool if they can find some way to facilitate uh, more play styles than, hey, pick uh, three of eight classes. So yeah, <laughs> definitely some things that need to be ironed out, right? Obviously, there's the bugs, maybe a bit of the UI confusion, maybe the visuals too. Like, as cool as they are, it does kind of get mixed together, right? Sometimes it's hard to tell where your allies are, where you are, where the, which, and the, where the enemies are. Yeah, if this is what they got so far, I think they're on the right track, and I'm looking forward to either like an update to the demo, or when they roll out in early access, or have a full release, or you know whatever comes next. They're they're pretty cool right now, and one of these days I'll play fights in tight spaces. But again, <laughs> for live 2D, hopefully that will come one day, right? But. Yeah, I guess this will be a shorter stream tonight. So, uh, yeah, I'll call it here. Thanks to everyone who came by, uh, checked me out, hung around, and even if you only uh, stayed for a little bit, I still appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday. Gonna return to Freedom Planet 2, because I played that when it first came out in, like, September. Didn't have not touched it too much since so i do have three more characters i could perhaps do a run with i'm gonna try one of them on sunday and uh hope you look forward to it for now let's look for someone to raid let's see who's on a little earlier tonight so we can perhaps catch someone we might not usually we'll see I have a slightly bigger mix of people to choose from as well. It just won't be night owls. Ooh. Well, well, before I do that, maybe I should turn off raids. Sure would be something if uh, someone were to raid me at this point. They were like, oh, well, I guess I'll do another run. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but... You know, when you're already prepared to kind of wind down and then suddenly you can't wind down, it's like... Hmm. 
well. Oh, wow. Someone made a March 7th model? That's actually kind of cool. That's like the advice I see a lot of people say. If you want to get into VTubing, pick a free model. Or, you know, just even pick a picture. You don't have to start with anything big. In fact, you probably shouldn't start with something big. As the old saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Start small, see if you're really, really into streaming, because you might not be. And if you didn't spend much, well, no, no skin off your back. You're basically gonna, the most you walk away with is lost time. All right. I guess another saying would be, don't dive in the deep end. Man. Tell I've... I feel like a lot of these folks I've raided before. Early on it was easy because I could always find someone new to raid, but... Now it's like, alright. Do I remember raiding them? Do I not? If I don't, maybe it might be worth raiding them again. seen quite a few content warning streams, I know. They were giving away that game for free, uh, was it April 1st only? I guess a lot of people jumped on that, seen, kind of seen the fruits of their, their efforts. Because a lot of people are collabing in that. It's like, sufficiently different enough from Lethal Company that, yeah, both in style and gameplay, that it works out. So that's pretty cool. Instead of trying to like collect things, you're just recording footage and becoming viral horror live streamers. It's almost like an undercurrent of um, reality to go with it. There's a game called Animal Shelter Simulator. It's kind of funny. I guess I should also say, yeah, that is a demo, and it is out, and still playable, so. If you want to give this a try yourself, you check out the gameplay, see if it's uh, up your alley. Definitely recommend giving it a go, because it's, like, really dang cool. It's really cool. Mm, at least I think it is. I don't know. It does require you to exercise maybe a bit more brain cells than usual. 
I can imagine this not being some people's thing, and you know what? That's totally fine, right? I just enjoy this kind of stuff. Anything with cards, right? You want me to check out the game, the likelihood of me doing so will jump significantly if it includes cards in some way. Even if I complain about cards being arbitrary and like seems like a lot of games have them now, I still enjoy cards. Cards are cool. I like cards. Collecting cards is fun. I used to do that a lot. I still kind of sort of do it. Uh... Yeah, I'm still looking. Believe me, I'll settle on someone eventually. I just gotta gotta let my mind make make the decision at some point. It's like the body says, "What? What if you went with this fella instead? What if you went with this fella instead? What if you went with this other fella instead?" On second guessing myself, but eventually I will make a decision. Right. I think I will very soon. Oh. Okay. Making sure I made some precautions. Let's see what they're doing. They've been playing for a while. It does look like they're still playing though, so... Maybe I should be safe in uh, reading into them. Oh, right, I have the stream manager up. I just click a channel. All right, let's see if they have it open. All right, cool, it just went through. All right, Timber Thief is playing Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's like a Jurassic Park tycoon. You know, you just make yourself a dinosaur park for everyone to come to. Nice way to wind down right after beating people up in medieval fantasy land. Let's relax by going to dinosaur theme park. Right? It's gonna be supremely relaxing. Alright, raid message. I actually have one in mind, and it's gonna be a really dumb one. You're gonna groan. You're gonna groan when you see it. There. <laughs> if you're joining on the raid, give them a nightly raid. Otherwise, have a good start to your weekend. I'll see you on Sunday for Freedom Planet 2. Take care. Yeah, as far as I can tell, there's nothing more concrete. I don't think there's a release date. Maybe a release window, but... You know, nothing too substantial. Let me check the store page real quick. Yeah, store page just says, coming soon. They were part of the turn-based Thursday fest. Also, Steam Deck Builders fest. I don't know. Hopefully they'll put out something soon, because I'm would. i eager to see more about this. <laughs> Alright, see ya.